organ, organizational learning or um, you know, learning across uh, functions, across projects, across silos, across organizational structures, but still typically inside an organization. And that was, I guess, what we're calling the third era of knowledge management, organizational learning um, type of focus. So if you look at Nancy's chart today in February of 2022, it actually looks like we're very overdue for the fourth era of knowledge management. So a very predictable fourth era could be, well, knowledge management that goes across organizations or goes across countries or goes across um, you know, organizational boundaries. So it could be things like the pandemic, climate change, systemic racism, stuff that's you know, big and broad going sort of all around the world um, in some kind of way. Maybe, maybe that's the fourth era of knowledge management or there's, I don't know, a dozen or two of us saying that actually maybe the fourth era of knowledge management is that, is that, um, you know, inter-organizational learning, great. Um, and or maybe it's this thing that we're currently labeling conversational leadership. So I think that's kind of the, the context I would give it to say we are very much born out of uh, tacit, implicit, explicit, creating an environment for knowledge to flow type of knowledge management where conversational leadership is coming from. Now, what I would say it's also coming from, just like knowledge management probably came from a few different fields, um, KM is also very heavy, or sorry, conversational leadership is very heavily learning and pulling from at least two other fields, um, organization development, group dynamics, as well as um, diversity, equity, and inclusion and the practice that's over there. So several fields are coming together potentially into this thing we might call conversational leadership. So, you know, just like in knowledge management, how we often say we, we break apart knowledge and management and we say, what do we mean by knowledge? And we have great debates about that. And then we say, what do we mean by management? And we have some discussions, maybe debates about that. And then we put the two together and of course have all these debates about what is knowledge management? What does that mean when you put these two words together? And I'd like to think that pretty much all of us here are, are in that space where it depends on the environment, it depends on the context. There are some similarities in the way we practice knowledge management, but of course it's quite specific to, um, to whatever situation we find ourselves in. Well, conversational leadership so far at about four years old, maybe five years old, so brand new very, we're still trying to figure out what it is. We've done the same thing with conversational leadership. We've taken the word conversation and we're rethinking that. And we've taken the word leadership and we're rethinking that. So I'd love to offer you just a couple minutes of thoughts on those two words. Um, so if you actually look up the word conversation in the dictionary or in a, a wiki somewhere, you'll typically see a, a definition, something to the effect of two people verbally sharing words. Something along that, that variation. That's typically what conversation is defined as. Well, um, I see some of your head nodding already on video, so thank you for that. I'm, I'm hoping that's a slight disagreement or a, uh, an interest in expanding that definition of conversation. So, the working definition we've got right now that by no means are we trying to say is the only one or the right one, but it's, it is meant to be a, a different way of thinking about this word conversation is an exchange of senses across time and space. An exchange of senses across time and space, which is sort of a strange phrase. Um, the thinking is, Yes, you absolutely can have a conversation with one other person. Two people talking, sure, that's a conversation. But at a very minimum, we'd like to think that you could also have a conversation with three people or with five people or with five million people. Maybe there's a way to have a conversation at a much larger scale. Um, we're also thinking that um, you can have a conversation, if, this, if you're willing to go this space with me, um, Maybe you can have a conversation with a piece of music. Maybe you can have a conversation with art. Maybe you can have a conversation quietly, you know, nonverbal conversation. 
this is why we're trying to go that 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 other definition of um, exchange of senses across time and space. The space part of that, or maybe I should say the time part of that is, we're also thinking about synchronous and asynchronous conversations. The kinds of conversations where I can put something in text and then someone can respond to it a day, a week, a month, a year, or a decade later. So it's a more long-term conversation as opposed to only right now, synchronous, real-time, two people talking to each other. So that's a little bit of our, our thoughts, our thinking around conversation. We're also putting a little bit of thought into the word leadership. So um, how do I wanna put some words to leadership? Henry Mintzberg has a word that he's created, uh, some of you may have heard of called community ship. And he doesn't say this exactly, but in our conversational leadership chats, what we basically say is, um, unfortunately the word leadership to this day, even in 2022, often means um, telling someone else what to do. And that's what leadership is. I'd like to think that the people on this call don't necessarily think of that as leadership or they think of that as maybe one small, maybe there's an instance where that kind of leadership is fit for purpose. But maybe in many other situations, there's a very different type of leadership where it's a a shared collective, I step in, I step out, you step in, you step out. We lead collectively together in some kind of skilled, practiced way. And that's where Henry Mintzberg is using this word community ship to basically say, unfortunately, the word leadership is misunderstood or has been sort of a little bit locked into one type of leadership um, with a lot of assumptions there. So what if we get creative and create a whole new word in the English language um, and play with that? So we've also even thought about, we're talking about conversational leadership today. We've even thought about calling it uh, conversational community ship. Um, but the concern would be that might be a step too far, just like in the 90s, how knowledge management was already difficult to get your head wrapped around, um, you know, a real challenging kind of thing. So potentially, um, yeah, this even conversational leadership could change its, its name over the next couple of, of years here. Okay, so those were a couple of things I wanted to mention first, sort of where came, where conversational leadership is coming from, what we mean by those two words separately. And now I wanna bring them together, just like in knowledge management, how difficult it is to say, well, what's your definition of knowledge management? I'll try to put of a, a bit of a definition or some words around what do we mean by conversational leadership. And the way I'll do it is actually by using um, three questions as opposed to giving you a paragraph description of what conversational leadership is. So I would say this, and I'll put it in chat so you can kind of see it if you're able to see Zoom chat. The first core question in conversational leadership is this, what is the conversation that we need to be having, to be having right now. Every one of those words is very important. What is the conversation? So what we just talked about with that definition of, of conversation, that we, not I, what do we need to be talking about? Um, and right now is also really important too. Um, uh, one of the phrases we sometimes hear in, in conversational leadership is, um, I think it's kind of funny, but hopefully it's not rude. Um, some conversations are not sort of two-way dialogue where I'm changing you and you're changing me and we're changing each other. Many conversations are what we might call, hopefully you can smile with this, um, parallel soliloquies where I'm talking at you and you may or may not be listening and you're talking at me and I may or may not be listening. So it's like we're on stage acting with each other as opposed to truly making deep contact with each other. Not that conversations always have to be difficult or always have to be contactful, but we're just trying to raise an awareness of types of conversations. Okay, so that's question one. If I were to try and give you a definition of conversational leadership, I would do it with a question. What's the conversation that we need to be having right now? Question number two is, in what way, or I'll put it in plural, ways, 
um, do we need to be having this conversation? This one's kind of interesting. In what ways do we need to be having? Well, I'm guessing many of you are familiar with um, liberating structures, right? So there's 35 different ways to lightly structure a conversation. So there's 35 examples right there. Um, a more common example would be, um, you know, we're sitting in a group of people and whoever feels ready to speak, speaks. That simple. It's probably the vast majority of conversations you've been a part of. Just being aware of that is a conversational process. Um, I'm sure you've been a part of conversations where you go around and you take turns. So each person speaks one thing. I think someone's sharing their screen if that was intended or not. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. So um, yeah, just being aware of the conversational process that's unfolding or emerging as it goes on. And frankly, being a little bit skilled at, um, is this conversational process fit for purpose in this conversation right now? What other conversational techniques or approaches might really um, support the needs of this conversation? Okay, so that's to me part of the definition of conversational leadership. And then one more third and final question, in what ways, is this conversation right now forming community? So this ties back to that definition of maybe it's not even conversational leadership, maybe it's conversational community ship. We found that um, you know there's lots of great books out there about how to deal with difficult people, crucial conversations, critical conversations, healing conversations. There's many books on many different types of conversations. In conversational leadership, specifically coming from knowledge management, we are so fascinated in what type of tacit knowledge is actually being evoked and shared and learned and understood. Using our KM techniques, using our KM cultures and tools, um, and now bringing in conversational tools and techniques and mindsets and approaches. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I'm watching the clock. We're only 15 minutes in. I might actually, I think I have time to maybe show you just a couple more things. If I share my screen this time, there's one core framework that we've been using or trying to develop in conversational leadership. So the idea is it looks a little bit like an egg that's kind of rolling forward. There's a little bit of forward momentum. So it's not a perfect circle or or oval. And what's causing this, this framework to roll forward is in the center, there's a concept called use of self, or just there written as self. And there's another concept of, we've already talked about, community ship. So if community ship is kind of shared leadership, kind of, self is, am I aware of um, my presence? Am I aware of my breathing? Am I aware of um, what I just said and the intent of what I just said? Um, am I aware of the impact that I'm having on others and that others are having on me and that we're having on the overall situation? That kind of deep awareness and practice of self. We're putting right at the center of, of conversational leadership, self and others and situation sort of rolling forward. And then around the outside, I think all I'll read is the four words and sort of the blue or purple, if you can see those colors, um, context, purpose, design, and enablers. So again, without going into a whole lot of detail, just to maybe see if this starts so any thoughts for you, if you're more of a, a detail-oriented, tangible person. Um, context, the question would be, are we aware, have we talked about the context that we find ourselves in? So right now we're in a bit of a a KM for Dev session, we're in a bit of a knowledge cafe. That's the context we find ourselves in mostly right now. But there's also a lot of other contexts that each one of us are bringing in to this beginning of a conversation right now. So at what point do I share the context of the conversation? The purpose of the conversation, you've heard about this from all of your, your project management meetings and learnings, right? What, what's the purpose of this project? What's the purpose of this task? What's the purpose of this conversation? For example, is it a debate? Is it a decision making? Is it a idea session? Right? Are we all sort of shared clarity around the, 
the purpose of this conversation right now. And then design enablers are sort of purposefully down at the bottom. Design is more like liberating structures and the things I already talked about, what's the design for this conversation. And then enablers is really interesting. This lines up really well with self, I think. Um, so you can see some of the sub bullets down there. Psychological safety, psychological courage, psychological bravery, um, my own, what we would say mindset, skill set, tool set. Sometimes we say spirit set and heart set. Am I aware of all the things that I, that I and others are bringing into this conversation that might enable or disable this conversation? So all those are sort of four, maybe six, if you include the two things in the center. That's a, a lot of the areas that we're doing a lot of research and diving in and trying to practice and build workshops around all of these different things to really, um, yeah, dive into exploring conversational leadership. The one last thing I'll mention, sorry, maybe two. Um, one is, um, so if David Gertine were here or Saleh or Danita or some of the other sort of facilitators and practice practitioners of conversational leadership, they would really want me to mention to you, um, I hope I don't cause any confusion or, or cause a, an oversimplification that conversational leadership is only about the conversation that we're having right now. David would very beautifully articulate something to the effect of, actually, if you look at this moment in history, February 2022, what's gotten to us to this point are the conversations that have been had or not had up to this very moment. And that's also true going forward. So therefore, it's a bit of, back to question number one, what conversation do, you, do we need to be having right now that could actually change the course of destiny and history and where we head from this point forward? So it is literally things like, is there something you're holding back on that now's not the right time or I don't know how to say it, that kind of stuff. Conversational leadership is really interested to sort of, um, I'm trying not to call it deeper levels of conversation. I wanna be a little bit cautious about that, but that might be the easiest language to use. Like, just being aware of when am I having a superficial, narrow conversation? When am I having an emotional conversation? When am I having a spirit type of conversation? And when am I having, for lack of a better word, a soulful um, conversation? I think the quote I'll leave you with there is uh, Theodore Zeldin says, the only conversations I wanna be a part of are the ones where everyone involved is willing to emerge as a different person. Only conversations I want to be a part of are ones where everyone involved is willing to emerge as a different person. Now we're 20 minutes past, so I should probably jump us into breakout room time. Um, the question I think I've got for you, I think we put it in the description of the whole event. The prompt question for this first breakout is, what does conversational leadership mean to you and how might you apply it? So I'm sneaking two questions in there. What is coming here? I'll put it in chat for you. What, what is conversational leadership and how might you apply it? And with that, Rocio, I think I'll pass it over to you to press the magic buttons. I think we're doing well, it, 10 minutes, right? Yes. Is it okay? Groups of three as well? Yep. Three, four, five. Anything in that number is usually a pretty good number. Okay. Let me just make one smaller and that we make more sure. Okay, I'll open it right now. You back in 10 minutes. So I hope it was an interesting conversation. Everyone is coming back. Uh, they still have a few more seconds for everyone to join. So let's give it this time. I hope this was very interesting for you and John is not yet back. Yes, here he is. Okay. All right. So I think that was the end of round one. Hopefully a nice start of a conversation for you. Let's uh, let's do the same thing again. I'm watching the clock. I think we still have 10 minutes for round two. Same new group, but same prompt question. What is conversational leadership to you and how might you apply it? Okay. So ready? 
Ready. Oh. Enjoy. Enjoy. So welcome back, everybody. We still have a few seconds until everyone comes back. I hope this second one was even more interesting than the previous breakout room. If anyone wants to say anything while we're waiting for the rest to join. Yeah, I found this very, very interesting, great interchange of ideas and uh, it's been very beneficial for me. Thank you for sharing, Edwin. Anyone wants to comment while the rest join? How was the feeling? Oh, John is here. Over to you, John. Yes. Yes, I think I think I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yep. Sorry about that. I think it's my connection. Um, yep. So one more round. Same question. Hopefully, a new group of people. What is conversational leadership and how might you apply it? And then after this round, we'll come back and all talk about it together as a big group for a few minutes. Okay, because there are people leaving, I'm just gonna merge. So there might be groups with five people. That's fine, Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so Any enjoy. Questions. See you in 10 minutes. Ciao. Ciao. Welcome back, Simone. No, oh, I, I wanted to continue the conversation and clicked on, on the button to come back. I, mistake. I was just but you have, they are going to close in four, me, four seconds. Eh? They're coming back, everyone. <laughs> everyone is back now. So I hope it was very useful. Now I pass it over to John. Are you back, John? Come see you. Ah, yes, there you are. All yours. Okay, I think we're all coming back. And yeah, sorry, my machine's taking a second to go between rooms, but wow. So I joined all three breakouts, hopefully like most of you, and I was loving it. Um, like any knowledge cafe, now we would just want to open it up to the whole group. Um, so you're welcome to unmute and share some thoughts. I'm also going to watch the chat if anybody feels more comfortable or if that's not too overwhelming to, to be in chat. Um, I think, you know, normally I don't at a, in a cafe like this, I don't normally share a few thoughts right up front, but I think I will, if that's okay. Um, just cause I heard two patterns emerge across the three groups and I just came from Martha, Noreen and Sophie, if it's okay to, to say your names, we were just getting started <laughs> in our breakout. Um, but across all three, the, the two things I heard the most, one is, um, the, the, that first question, what's the conversation that we need to be having right now. And if I add just a little bit more thinking to that, it's kind of like, I don't know about you, but my personal life, a large portion of my life feels like it's on autopilot where I'm just going from meeting to meeting, conversation to conversation. And it's as if I can't be myself. It's as if the system is telling me, here's your thought, here's what you're gonna say now. And you know what I mean? like. It's, it's I'm, on, I'm on autopilot for lack of a better word. So that what is the conversation I need to have right now can actually be really empowering and very difficult to even be aware of what did just happen at home or what just happened on my commute or what just happened in that meeting I just came from that I need to talk about for a few minutes. So what is the conversation I need to have right now versus predefined autopilot? That was a pattern. And then another thing was, um, it seemed like a couple of groups were really interested in the definition of leadership, um, especially in hierarchies, where there again seems to almost be like a predefined, this is what leadership looks like. And, and frankly, it, it doesn't really look like conversational leadership. So that's how I'll start the group here. How did your breakouts go? Anybody want to uh, share at the whole group level for about 10 minutes here? Hi, John. This is Shelsa from India. Can I come in? Absolutely, please. Okay. Um, I joined three different groups. It was very interesting. Nice to meet uh, uh, the other uh, colleagues uh, discussing uh, about conversational leadership. And what I could gather from all three different groups is uh, that, uh, that there are different types of leaderships. And uh, when we talk about conversational, it's more inclusive. It's more 
accepting accepting the diversity uh, of mindsets decisions uh, it has plus points as well it has minus as well uh, the plus when we talk about is uh, it gives an equal opportunity to every participant every team member uh, it gives a comfort zone uh, and more acceptance of uh, being uh, the part of the team so that they are heard they are respected they are valued uh, so these are some of the plus points that we discussed but when i talk about the negative uh, the negative is that uh, uh, that uh, sometimes it can be very time consuming because uh, in a very fast paced kind of a world that we are in when we talk about leadership it's more about like mentoring guiding directing informing telling you know those kind of uh, things uh, are uh, are like fasting fastening the process whereas when we talk about conversational it actually provides an opportunity to everyone uh, to have their viewpoint and sometimes it can be challenging to come to a same platform bringing everyone together harmoniously uh, for uh, one conclusion uh, which is uh, which is a more collaborative kind of a a decision so at times it can be time consuming but definitely a very uh, good and a positive uh, way of uh, defining innovative uh, leadership thank you so over to you john <laughs> i'm <laughs> leaving it open to the whole group thank you shelza watching the chat as well so john um since my definition of leadership is kind of different um, because I've been in the military for 18 years, the leadership is somebody who inspires you to do your best and a manager is somebody who directs something to you. So part of conversational leadership is inspiring and working with those people and actively listening, empathizing with what they're saying rather than, as you said, go on autopilot. So that's going to be a big thing right there. Yeah, and John, it looks like Johnny in chat just put something very similar. Um, convincing stakeholders and taking their opinions into account. Enrich the result with the perspective of other stakeholders. Maybe the opposite of military command. Yeah, so if I jump in a little bit here, sorry. Um, mostly agree, Johnny. Um, okay. And yet I would also, like the words jump out at me, like right away that first word, convince. Um, that that kind of puts the hairs on my neck up a little bit. Like, okay. I'm Thanks. I'm not sure we're trying to convince anybody of anything. I think we're trying to raise awareness of okay. what's going on here. That's one thing. And then, but I, but I hear like uh, you know you're talking about enriching the result and and sharing perspectives. Even the word opinions kind of jumps out at me. Like, um, yeah, yes, true. They probably are opinions. But then there's also like. It's their, it's their perspective of reality, which you then say in your very next sentence. And then the, the other thing I would say with your opposite of military command, um, we're trying to be very careful in conversational leadership to not judge and to not say, to not say like, I wouldn't want you to walk away from anybody to walk away from this and think, ooh, okay. conversational leadership is only about deep conversations. It's not. We're trying to say there is actually a time and a place to talk about the weather. There's a time and a place okay. to talk about sports. There's a time and a place to talk about my commute. It's not, dare I say, meaningful, except that it could be bonding. It, it you know, the perp, the intent of that conversation is for us just to get to, mm -hmm. to meet each other a little bit. We're not trying to say that like, that was a bad conversation, I think is what I'm trying to say. So does it have something to do with empathy? You bring uh, you, you, some empathy issues into the conversation, into the, yeah. Empathy, okay. awareness, okay. Um, okay. Uh -huh. range, you know, being aware of, ooh, this is a difficult conversation. Ooh, this is an easy conversation. Ooh, this is an emotional conversation. Ooh, this is a, a detail-oriented conversation. Ooh, this is a strategic, a long-term conversation. Just, I don't know, like, um, very fast awareness, very fast mm -hmm, processing mm -hmm. of, ah, I see what type of conversation we're in right now. I'm not sure that's the type of conversation I need to be in okay. right now. That's the, that's the thing. Okay, thanks for your feedback. Yeah. 
wide open. I'm watching chat too. So one of the things that I wrote down indeed is a little bit sort of uh, synthesizing a few different notions on leadership, authority, self-leadership. So you can also have self-leadership even without having formal authority. You can practice quite a lot of these skills or related skills in your family as I did uh, with my kids, um, especially because I experienced that you tend to be like a little bit worn out at the end of the day and you come home and you don't have all the energy to really dive into conversations and really explain things and really listen and, and just you just pull the authority card and say well now you do this because i say so <laughs> and of course i'm summarizing a bit it's all it's a little bit different every time but i mean i experienced for myself that i sometimes fell into that pattern and so i tried to do a lot of these um th that was actually the main thing that it um uh conveyed with me it's a, a lot of things similar with non-violent communication so really from a understanding of yourself and a uh a positive learning attitude towards the other person or persons really trying to get an understanding first of where they are what they mean what they how they come to whatever they're telling or or um bringing to the conversation that would be to me the uh also the uh the, that's non-violent communication and that's also to me conversational leadership and i made a summary that's called uh enabling others or enabling yourself so enabling to be better so enabling yourself to be better than it's self-leadership and enabling others to be better and that can be anything i mean you sometimes you can enable someone to be better by understanding where they are and what they want to achieve and then saying well now i order you to do that so giving out an order doesn't necessarily to me conflict with conversational leadership but if you do that from understanding where people are and what people want to achieve what goals they have what vision they have and so on that's another thing it's not just giving someone an order the minute they step into the door there's definitely an environment that calls for orders um yeah, there was a lot in there too. Yeah. What I'd really quick share is um, same thing. We've got two children and our youngest is 10. She's female. And um, some of my highlights, I, just yesterday, um, I was playing with her and I noticed we weren't really talking. We were playing with some of her toys and taking them apart and, and making funny noises and, you know, just kind of playing with toys. And to me, I was in conversation with her, right? It was, it was sort of a, it was a playful conversation that kind of thing and i was just aware of i don't need to i don't need words and she doesn't need words we're in that kind of thing rocio i see your hand but i also know i kind of cut off janetta rocio do you want to go yeah, ahead you know, i wanted to because yes that's certainly easy you're uh, as johnny was saying you're more emotional uh ready to when you have people with whom you have some certain sentiment when you have people in the room that create an environment that is difficult when you don't trust the environment how can you actually move forward with the conversation just put that person aside no it's why it's so that's back to like bart was talking about nvc nonviolent communications absolutely a tool that we reference um dealing with difficult people is the tool it's a it's a book and there's a process in that book for process ways to to have difficult conversations um yeah, it's a practice, right? And there's a real judgment in the moment of, um, in psychotherapy, we call it um, retroflect, which means to hold back. I'm actually not going to speak my mind right now. In conversational leadership, we would say, I'm very aware of that retroflection. I'm aware that I'm holding back. Um, I think that's the little nuance as opposed to, um, what do we, in KM, you've heard this before, uh, reaction and response. Am I responding to what's going on or am I just reacting without really processing it? I think that's where KM and conversational leadership come together in your question, Rocio. Like, so in that moment where there's someone that I don't click with or it's every time we're in conversation, it's, you know, dare I say painful. Um, yeah, what, what, what am I aware of in that moment where I'm going to speak directly at my discomfort or I'm going to dodge my own discomfort. 
one of the reasons I love conversational leadership so much is I personally don't feel like I'm that skilled at it. So I'm happy to practice and learn. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Janetta, what were you, what did I jump in? Sorry. I was just, uh, thank you so much, John. I was just reacting to your uh, point of view. I think in conversational leadership, uh, to have a conversational leadership, you, have, you must have self-esteem. Otherwise, you are always in conflict. But um, it's very difficult to find people who have really self-esteem and they are not, you know, I am who I am, you know, excessive self-esteem. So that that was just one one shot comment. <laughs> That's it. I love it. Yeah, thanks. And sorry if I'm jumping in between each person. So please jump in. But I love this stuff, so I'm getting excited. Uh, two things, as you say that, Janetta. One is um, one of the models and the theories uh, that we talk about in our workshop is called. It's kind of a funny name. It's called the cuckoo clock theory, like a German cuckoo clock. And you know how those work without batteries. There's a weight pulling down, and there's a gear on the inside turning. And so, you know, the weight moves the gear and the clock goes, right? It's, it's kind of amazing. Um, the cuckoo clock theory says maybe inside our bodies, we have a very similar mechanism, a psychological type of mechanism where something is weighing me down, something is slowing and pulling and causing me discomfort. And that same discomfort is turning a gear for development and growth. And so we talk about it in conversational leadership to say, um, if you can be aware of your own internal divide, your own internal likes and dislikes of self, your conversations can come from a very different place. And you're sort of aware of what's, what's going on for you, your own patterns. So yeah, that kind of conversation. Um, and I had another thought, but I've kind of lost it. So <laughs> I'll open it back up. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah, thanks, Janetta. Any other? I think we've got time for what? Maybe one more comment before we hand it back to the KM for Dev crew for closing. Question, comment, concern, agree, disagree? Any, any comment at all? I totally, totally agree with you, John. There are one or two points which uh, which I echo uh, with you. One is uh, uh, respond and react. Uh, it's very important, but uh, somewhere I very much um, um, on same note, like I'm not afraid of conversing and I appreciate to have a conversational a uh, way, way uh, to come to a decision or a conclusion rather than having it in a, in a more uh, uh, directing and um, those kind of things. So I think uh, this is more uh, innovative and more comfortable kind of a way of leading uh, a, a, maybe a group or whatever it is, but uh, I'm more convinced with the conversational uh, leadership. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And I guess what I've just put in chat, and Jennifer, I did see your question there too. Um, sorry, I didn't keep up with all the chat. Um, uh, the KM for Dev team was saying it'd be okay since it's a free event on May 23rd and May 24th. We're going to follow the sun. So it's from noon uh, Greenwich Mean Time on May 23rd to noon Greenwich Mean Time on May 24th. We're doing a 24 hour Zoom call free, everyone in the world invited to come join us. We've got a couple hundred people registered now for the event. Um, it's basically a 24 hour practice of three things. It's a, it's a triangle. In fact, you know what? I'll share my screen really quick since there's still maybe one minute left. Um, it looks like this. So come over here, come over here. This is what we're calling the global bridging event. And so it's got this triangle. Sorry, one second. Looks like this. We're trying to bridge across on the left of the triangle, knowledge management, organization development, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. We want to bridge across those disciplines. Oh, by the way, throw conversation. To me, conversational leadership is those three things. So it's all on that one leg. 
There's another leg where we're purposefully trying to bring together students, early career, mid-career, late career, and retirees. So multiple generations all on one call. By the way, already registered. So very excited, you know, across both of those legs. And then the third leg across the bottom, um, could be anywhere, is um, east, west, north, and south of the planet. So literally trying to bring together different lived experiences from whatever country, culture, community you either like were raised in or have lived in or have traveled and been a part of. Um, we're really looking to, again, sort of bridge across. And then Jennifer, I think it fits with your, your cuckoo clock and then what you can see right here in the middle. We think maybe one of the core bridges that we'd like to really practice and the kinds of conversations we'd like to have is there, are, there seems to be a, a personality type that really likes to think big picture and long-term and where is this all headed? And it can be very positive, it can be very negative, but you know, long-term vision type conversations that we want to simultaneously bridge with very short-term action people. Um, uh, you know what I mean? Like what, so great. I love your theory of conversational leadership, but when I go home and I talk to my spouse tonight, what do I say to them and, and how do I get feedback and how do I debrief how that conversation, like, you know what I mean? Very practical short-term. So this whole 24 hour event is meant to be for that. So I put the registration link there in chat for you. And I think that's where I'll pause. And I, I hope this was a fun cafe and I hope you like conversational leadership or at least um, something about it. Rocio, Jakob, Gladys, think, Sarah, uh, Shanetta. I think you. Sarah had the, the hand raised before. I don't know, Sarah, if you wanted to say something that you still want to. Um, I was just really, thanks Rocio. Thanks a lot, John, I've really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot and I had some really great sessions with the other people. I just want to say one of the things that's been really useful for me um, is I did a Myers-Briggs personality test and like it helped me really understand other people's way of communicating and that helps in conversations. For example, I'm sort of a bit fundamentally allergic for people who like being too organized, but it actually really helped me understand people who are like that a lot better. So, you know, just a tip, but thanks very much. I found it a really nice session. Thanks. Thank you very much, John. It was um, really, really uh, interesting and at times also thought-provoking session, I think. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Um, and yes, for sure, everyone uh, who can should for sure also uh, go ahead and sign up for the uh, global bridging event that, uh, that John is hosting. Um, I'll certainly do that myself. Um, also on the closing note, um, there might be some new members here today uh, or people who aren't necessarily members yet. So um, I will also be adding a link to whomever would like to join the uh, km for dev community as well. Um, uh, everyone is, is, uh, is welcome to join really. Um, thank you everyone for your uh, participation, especially you, John, for um, leading this uh, Knowledge Cafe. It was um, a real pleasure. Um, and yeah, thank you for the, the active, many active conversations that we've, we've had on this. Um, with regards to the, uh, the next uh, Knowledge Cafe, the, the one uh, that will be happening in, in the next month in April, we're still defining or figuring out what the topic should be. Um, and, and once we know, um, we'll of course be sharing uh, the topic and, and the date that it will be hosted on. And with regards to that as well, uh, everyone, you're more than welcome to propose uh, topics for um, this year's uh, season of the Knowledge Cafe as well, as I think we still have a few slots that can be uh, filled in. So if you have a great topic, uh, something that you would like to present or to know more about, um, feel free to drop us a, uh, um, uh, a message or a, an email on, on that topic and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, can add to the, uh, the season. I don't know if you um, have anything additional, Gladys. Uh, thank you so much, Jacob, um, John, and Rocio, and also all the other team members of Game for Dev for your great support that you are 
We have made today's our knowledge cafe to be one of the most exciting one, quite interactive, and everyone is contributing. Um, maybe uh, before we end the session, we would like to meet as the camp for the core group team meeting and also the team for the knowledge cafe, so that we can have um, a deep brief session about today's uh, session, so we can stop the recording and. The members who are still here, you're welcome to join us. <laughs>